Hello there. I thought I would continue with um, with uh, my various reviews of the uh, 1970s Volvo 200 series brochures, which I have in my collection. So I have a brochure for the 265, which is from 1977. Uh, I've also got a rather nice colour and upholstery brochure from 1979. We've got the Volvo 245 and the 244. Both of these I believe are 70... yep, yeah, 77. And I've also got a 244 brochure here from 1976. What we also have to start us off is a cat that has just jumped on the table there. Do you want to say hello? No, you don't. But you are taking up some of my light, which is a bit annoying. But we do have this rather nice article from The Times, dated Thursday, February the 13th, 1975. And this basically covers the introduction of the 264 range into the UK market. Now, I did a bit of a calculation last night as regards the prices from 1979. Um, it wasn't anywhere near the 40 or 50,000 mark, it was actually nearer the 30,000 pound mark, which uh, for a top of the range GLE was quite reasonable for the time. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with this 265 brochure. So, there we have our 265 GL on the front, I believe in light green metallic. It's a very simple brochure, actually. So obviously you've got the information about the 265DL, but it literally just is a fold-out brochure like this, where you've got the 265GL estate in that nice blue metallic there. A little bit of information about the vehicle itself. And that is literally it. I do wonder if there are other versions of this brochure. Or if this brochure actually went alongside as an addendum to the saloon brochure, which covered a lot of the sort of features of the actual car itself. What we will do though is we will have a look at this 244 brochure. So the first one we're going to be looking at is this one from 1976. So we start off with uh, this particular example here. At this sort of pretty much at this time, this car was pretty much um, new on the market. Um, it had replaced the 144 that came before it, and there were, although the basic body structure was the same, there were a number of detail number of detail revisions, such as the uh, overhead cam engine, uh, which replaced the. Uh, the older overhead valve unit. I'm not 100% certain but I've got a feeling that they do use the same block albeit with a different cylinder head. I think in this case in the 244 it was a cross flow design with overhead camshaft. So for the time it was bang up to the minute. You also notice that slightly different steering wheel design for the earlier models and also certainly on the four cylinder versions, a simplified instrument setup, although you do still get your clock and there's rather snazzy heater controls, but no air conditioning, which was uh, something, and also no overdrive, which was something that um, the V6 models had. So just a little bit of information about uh, what you actually get, all of the boot space. And also spaciousness and how it was sort of really sort of built as a family car, but for the family that does not require estate practicality. Also got uh, details of the fairly rigid tests that the car actually went through. And also information about the live rear axle 
but how they have managed to tame that live rear axle for better road holding and stability. Also got information about the turning circle, which as I said yesterday was pretty enviable on these cars. And also information about the front suspension and also the radial ply tyres which were used. Pretty much now the centre of the brochure with a nice full page spread. This rather yellow looking 244DL, resplendent in the uh, complementary background. And now we go on to the engine. So this particular engine did for the time develop um, a fair amount of power and um, certainly in fuel injected form it was pretty comparable to other stuff of the day. It was certainly a competitor. Um, as I said previously, you do have the cross-flow design. On standard models, it was using a Stromberg carburetor, but on fuel-injected models, it was obviously using, I believe, a variation of Bosch cage Ektronic. Two types of transmission available. You had a standard four speed, but you also had that three speed automatic available as well. Coming through to the various safety aspects, Volvo has obviously long been associated with safety, and the 200 series, especially in the 244 form, was no exception. And the one thing that we touched on yesterday was those um, diagonally opposed circuit braking. Interestingly on this model, uh, which isn't the V6, it doesn't have vented front discs, but it does have four pot calipers, which was uh, quite a sporty solution. But then again, the Austin Princess also had four pot calipers, so not sure how sporty it is, but uh, it's certainly safe. So very much a car with rust proofing in mind, but also the American market in mind with these five mile an hour bumpers. Designed to take an impact of up to five miles an hour without any actual damage to the vehicle. Things get a little bit plusher with the GL. We have four speed overdrive transmission and a tachometer. We also have a bit of a plush treatment for that steering wheel there, and also the option of leather. We also have the option of uh, the fuel injection system there, which develops, that's pretty good actually, 123 brake horsepower. Uh, torque wise, what are we developing? Peak torque is. 170-ish newton meters at three and a half thousand rpm. Um, actually, it peaks before that. Yeah, three and a half thousand to about four, four and a half thousand rpm. Peak power developed at roughly five thousand six hundred rpm. And this is the bit that interests me, is all of the facts about the car. So you've got the legendary B-series engine. And this is the interesting bit, was all of these optional accessories you could get. So you had the sports steering wheel. You also had this rather interesting dial arrangement, so these are uh, sporty dials. Um, you also had number four, which was suspension load levelers. Number six, which is obviously our Volvo air conditioning, the big air condition switch. Number three, which is an interesting looking gear knob, gear stick. Leather clad, pleasing to use and attractive. 
We also had the uh, the grill kit there, which had those rather snazzy inbuilt fog lamps. And that was something you saw quite a lot on the aftermarket during the 1980s. I think Pella produced uh, some direct replacement grills. Certainly I've seen some on the Mark II Vauxhall Cavalier, among others. I think there were some as well for the Mark III Escort. That was uh, something that sort of came briefly into fashion during the 1980s, were these um, grills with the additional driving lamps in them. And that is the end of that brochure. So we've done the 244, also done the 265 Estate. Briefly touched on this, and in the next video I'm going to cover the 245 and the 244 brochures from 1977. And also this upholstery brochure. So I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Also, if you would like to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to JCT's Fascinating Hobbies for more upcoming videos.